Hey guys, Doug from Pine Tree Lion. If you haven't been to the channel before, we're all about the outdoors. And if that's the kind of content you enjoy, please consider subscribing. That being said, we're indoors today uh, for a very specific reason. All right, so the plan today is we're gonna go over all my camera equipment that I use when I'm uh, filming in the outdoors and creating uh, my videos. I am gonna show you some of the stuff I used in the past and stuff I'm currently using. Storm's with us here. She's wondering why the hell I'm talking to a camera. So we have a little setup here in my basement. I do have a little light here, cheap uh, system that came from Amazon. Mount Dog is the name of the, uh, the lighting outfit. It's about a hundred bucks for two lights. I'm just using one right now and uh, should be good enough for today. We got some sunlight coming out of the window beside uh, myself as well. Putting together videos, you gotta shoot the content then you have to edit the content. So we'll go through the kind of the whole process and the stuff I'm using to, uh, to create the videos. And hopefully that's something that interests you. To get started, we'll talk about how I started. So back in 2017, uh, I started the channel and knew nothing about filmmaking really. Start with this, the uh, iPhone 5S, and this is how I was uh, filming all the early videos, just using this and editing on this as well using uh, iMovie which comes with iPhone. You already have a phone in your pocket. Uh, most people, uh, if you have an iPhone, it does come with the uh, iMovie uh, app which you're able to uh, edit with and basically that's all I did. So everything was all in one compact and a relatively cheap way to do videos because like I said, you already have a phone. The only thing I did with this is I got an external microphone that actually uh, plugged into the headphone jack when back in the day when they had headphone jacks and I used that uh, to improve my audio quality. That's how I started. Then as I kept going, I decided I wanted to improve the visual uh, look of the videos, maybe shoot in different frame rates and uh, fool around with that kind of stuff. So I ended up buying uh, a used camera, a Canon uh, M3. This is the first variation of uh, Canon getting into the uh, mirrorless world with the uh, EOS uh, M system. This system is pretty much non-existent now. Um, but it does shoot, it does shoot good video. Um, it's got a flip up screen, not a flip sideways screen. So that it was a little bit problematic when you want to put a mic on the top of this thing. So I had, uh, I had a rig coming out the bottom here so I could put the microphone beside. It worked really good, 22 millimeter lens on there. And I also had the 55 to 200 and the 18 to 55 as well. This was a good system uh, for as long as it lasted and it was nice and small and compact, great to bring out in the outdoors, uh, depending what you're, uh, you're, you're having to carry, especially if you're going camping and stuff. I actually went back to a mirrored camera, uh, DSLR, I went to the uh, Canon uh, 70D and I can't remember exactly why, but I'm pretty sure it was based, because that was the first um, DSLR camera that I was aware of uh, with Canon that went to dual pixel autofocus. And this was contrast. Uh, based autofocus and that became problematic when it gets a little bit dark and the focus is around you and not on you and that is very frustrating when you're creating videos as many of you will know so I got away from this particular mirrorless system not because I didn't like the size or the image quality or any of that kind of stuff that came out of it uh, this is great on batteries as well basically all the whole reason for it was just to get away from uh, the uh, contrast based autofocus so that's why I switched to the Canon 70D which I since uh, sold so I used the 70D for a while and uh, actually quite a while and really enjoyed uh, that camera as well and then um, I saw on Twitter one day that uh, Gerald Undone who many of you may know from the camera world or when you're researching cameras and stuff he was selling his uh, Panasonic G5. And I had heard a lot of great things about the G5 and the ability to, to shoot in 4K became kind of a, um, a thing that, you know, interested me. Like, you know what, I can get some 4K video out of this. And a lot of other filmmakers and YouTubers had used the G5 and had a lot of great things to say about it. So I went ahead and, and I, uh, I bought that and used that for quite a while. As time went on, that became frustrating because again, uh, depth from defocus, I, I believe it's called, contrast-based autofocus system on that as well, kind of going back to that. And that camera would focus on just about anything in the frame other than you or the thing you wanted to uh, have the camera focus on. So that became extremely frustrating. Using 4K was great, except file sizes were, were huge. And that becomes an issue when you're editing, that becomes an issue when you start storing your videos uh, like I do here on my uh, rugged uh, Lacy drives or Lacy drives 
uh, that's one of the things you got to consider as well is you know you're working with 4k video all that's fine and dandy looks fantastic you can pull into uh, close up really nicely and it looks great and all that stuff but you have to edit it and that that becomes an issue too a new program came out called luma fusion and then i started using that when i got the uh, panasonic gh5 i was editing on that as well uh, the ipad had no problem edit editing uh, 4k and i still use an ipad i use an ipad pro this is the 2018 model and i still use luma fusion for my my editing from the gh5 after being frustrated with all the uh, autofocus issues I wanted to go back to Canon, I wanted to go back to dual pixel, but I wanted to get into uh, the full frame camera and what I'm currently shooting on right now is the uh, EOS R and there are deficiencies with the EOS R as well. Um, most of it being that uh, the only 4K on it is a cropped 4K. I think it's a 1.7 or 1.8 times crop. Because of that, I, I decided to kind of completely change how I do my videos and I started uh, shooting in all I 1080p. Canon has a great looking image. The colors, the Canon colors are you've probably heard of are fantastic and the 1080 uh, All I is fantastic. That's what I currently use and still use and when I upload a video to YouTube a lot of times I'll uh, render the 1080p video in 4K. I'll upload it into YouTube as a 4K video and from what I hear uh, a lot of times uh, YouTube will treat that video a little bit better as a 4K video, not compress it as much. Uh, with the EOS R, I have um, currently on it a 1635L lens, uh, F4, and for those that use no cameras and no lenses, uh, it's a great lens, uh, it has a great image, and the beauty of it is uh, most of the stuff I'm doing outdoors, I want a wide angle lens, 95% of the time, that's the lens I'm using. Uh, for all my YouTube videos and that's the lens I'm using right now. By the way, I use that with an adapter because the EOS R has a RF mount which is the newer uh, Canon mount and the lens I do have, the 1635, is an EF. I did pick up the uh, Canon 50mm RF lens and basically what I use this for is low light. So you're out camping, you're out in the uh, early morning hours or the evening hours, it gets dark, you can put this on f-stop of 1.8 you're allowing more light into the lens and uh, so you get a you get a pretty nice image out of this so that's really the only time i'll use that recently um, for my birthday i got the 70 to 300 uh, this canon lens and this is an ef uh, mount as well and reason for that as i mentioned in a previous video is i have had opportunities to uh, see some animals mostly birds from a distance uh, with a 35 millimeter max or you're going to switch to a 50, you're not really going to have that opportunity to uh, capture that animal or bird very well. If it is uh, getting dark out, I use um, a Loom Cube. This is uh, a great little, great little light. Actually, it pumps out uh, quite, a, I don't know what the exact lumen rate is, but I can post it at the bottom of the screen here if I remember. And I got a little diffusion uh, on top of it. But this is great around the campsite. I can illuminate things so that you can actually film into the evening. It's one of the cameras that I, I use as well is a GoPro. Now, this is the uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black. So over the last couple of years, this is the GoPro I've uh, I've used. Um, it's worked fine. There's, it, GoPro always has its uh, share of little issues and uh, little gremlins inside, I guess. I don't know what the case may be. But when I bought this and updated it, um, I updated it through Wi-Fi and it never really worked right, but when I actually um, updated it um, through the through the website, it uh, worked better after that. But these are great for, of course, action, but I mean, the only real action I'm doing is uh, the most of the time I'm using this is for canoeing, to get it on the canoe. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about if it uh, gets accidentally wet or happens to fall in the water, I tether it to the canoe so it's it's safe. Uh, I use it for underwater shots in that same respect. And I've used it for all kinds of other things where you just need something that's small, it's durable, it's waterproof, um, it's, uh, it's very, very handy to have as a secondary camera. At one point I did have a Sony camera as well. I believe the uh, HX80, I think it was called. Uh, that one ended up in um, Woodland Caribou in one of the lakes was able to get it back out but uh, it cooked the camera and I used to use that one for a time as well I actually forgot about that some of the cases I use uh, I use an f-stop uh, ICU internal uh, camera unit I believe it's called 
And the beauty of this one is when you're going camping or you have a lot of equipment or canoe camping, you can put your camera stuff in here that you'll use for that particular trip and basically put in the top of your bag or what have you, easy access, yeah. and um, this protects your camera gear uh, quite well, better than you would think. Nanook or Nanook uh, 915, I believe this one is. Yeah, the 915. And this is waterproof and drop proof and pretty much bomb proof. This thing is, is heavy duty. I've never had an issue with it. It's been through a lot. I'll use this uh, canoeing. I'll use this for all my winter camping. I'll throw out the camera. I can fit uh, the OSR in there with uh, a couple of lenses and the microphone. And this thing, it works great. Nice, comfortable uh, strap here as well. So for SD cards, I use the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And that's what I got in here. Uh, this is a Pelican case, and it's a hard case, and uh, it's got a waterproof uh, seal around it, rubber seal gasket. I like using the 64 gig. I don't like having all my stuff uh, on a on a big card, because uh, then I'd have multiple projects on a big card, and if something happens to that card, I lose multiple projects. I like 64 gigs because I can basically dedicate 64 gig card to each project that I'm doing, and that way, if something were to happen with the card, a corrupt card, what have you, I would only lose one project. And it's happened just once, but um, it was very frustrating. I lost the second half of uh, a canoe trip, uh, tr truck tent camping up at Duke Lake uh, with a couple of buddies. Uh, yeah, I lost the second half of the trip, but I got was able to salvage most of it thanks to using a lot of GoPro footage. That was with the, uh, uh, the GH5. Have I been saying G5? <laughs> the best song, GH5. For all my videos, I use the Rode Video Mic, uh, not the Pro version, just the regular version that actually takes a 9 volt battery, uh, which I change like maybe twice a year because uh, it's unbelievable how long they last. The Rode Video Mic Pro uh, is the one that uh, is powered by your camera, so that's that's the one that you would get nowadays. Uh, but I, I still like this one, even though you have to sometimes change the battery. And I use the uh, the Rode Wireless Go 2 system, which comes with two mics and the receiver that goes on top of the camera. I also have uh, lavalier mics for it with a little uh, wind tough on it as well because generally I'm using this equipment outdoors and you're gonna get some wind and that prevents uh, prevents the wind noise. And the reason why I went with the wireless two and I waited for it, um, just because often I have somebody else on the channel, whether it's Jamie, uh, Mark's hanging around or anybody really, that way you can mic both people up. More often than not, I'm using the uh, the video mic. It just captures more ambiance, and when you're in the outdoors, that's the kind of uh, stuff I want to hear anyways. I want to hear a lot of what's going on outside of me. A couple of random things. Got a newer battery case. These things are great. They hold up four batteries, and I do have the Power Extra batteries that are extra for the uh, EOS R. So, that's a third party. You might want to consider doing that, save a little bit of money. But this is a great pack. Fits nicely in the camera bag. Speaking of which, I have the uh, Vanguard, the Ultra Rides 48 camera bag. And I'm guessing that's for uh, 48 liters. And this is quite nice. Good padding on the back, what have you. A lot of compartments. Side uh, access for your, your camera itself. And generally, I can put everything that I use in that bag. So if I'm going somewhere I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to need, I'll bring the entire bag. But if I'm planning for a specific kind of trip, I'm loading the F-Stop or the Nanook. So the drone I use is the DJI Spark. That's the Spark there. Pretty small. And in the case itself, uh, it holds a couple extra batteries along with the one that's on the drone itself and then uh, spare props and I also carry a little wire that goes from my phone uh, to the controller because I'm using I actually use an older phone uh, my older iPhone SE again with the newer models with the uh, the folding arms is a lot more appealing and I hope uh, at some point in the near future that I'm going to upgrade because uh, not too many people use the uh, spark anymore or even have one uh, I would recommend the DJI uh, Mini 2 if you were going to get 
anything, that would be the one to get. And it falls under 250 grams. That it weighs in at 249, 249 grams. Uh, therefore, you don't need a license for it. You don't need to register it with the government or uh, Transport Canada. I am a licensed uh, drone pilot and my stuff is uh, on file with uh, Transport Canada. So I'm good to go. These are my hard drives. Um, I'll put my videos after I finish them. I'll end up putting them on here so I can refer to them in, in the future. And a lot of times I do that. They're just nice to have. I mean, it's this is a, it's a fun hobby and I want to keep my work. I got a RAV uh, Power. This is a Wi-Fi hub. I highly recommend if you have an iPad, you get one of these things. The great thing about it, it'll hook up to your iPad via Wi-Fi and you're able to transfer files from your iPad onto a hard drive. Still use it to transfer videos over because if you have an iPad, there's no SD card slot. So you have to find other ways to move video clips and uh, using iCloud and stuff like that isn't always easy either. So the other thing I'll use too is uh, an Apple dongle and this one's for an SD card. Put the SD card in there. USB-C type goes into an iPad Pro. If you don't have a Pro version, you have an iPad Air, what have you, you can get one with the uh, Lightning uh, adapter. Everything I have and or an updated version of what I have, I have it linked in all my videos, the bottom of all my videos, including this one. They are Amazon affiliate links. So if you purchase something through the link, I get a little commission at no extra cost to you. So please feel free to use those links. I also use a Cameron CF700 uh, tripod with a Manfrotto ball head on it. The tripod's carbon fiber, that's what CF stands for. The Manfrotto ball head is uh, not a video head. I do have a Manfrotto video head as well. I just find that the video heads are very heavy and that's great if you're doing something like this, but when you're out in the woods and traping around and carrying all this stuff with you, uh, which I have, and, I, and occasionally I still use it. It's heavy. I don't do a whole lot of uh, pan and tilts and that kind of stuff in my little filmmaking. So I don't really need that. Um, the beauty of the ball head is it's uh, it's very uh, lightweight and it secures the camera very, very well and it, it works fantastic. Um, I'm always on uneven ground and I can uh, either adjust the tripod to be as best I can, but I can always adjust the uh, the ball head to move it any direction I like. Anyways, I know that's a lot to uh, to go through. I will tell you this, it's fun, it's a great hobby, it's interesting, and meeting wonderful people like yourselves, and interacting on comments with you people, emails, uh, I've met a lot of great people through that, and I've made a lot of wonderful friends on YouTube, and I do consider them friends, and I support other channels, and uh, other channels support me, and it's a fantastic community, it's a great hobby, it's a lot of fun. If you're going out there to make uh, make millions of dollars uh you probably got the wrong attitude about it but you can make a few bucks trust me you can make a few bucks at it if you uh if you try hard enough and you monetize and you get enough people involved uh, another great thing is um people companies send you stuff to try out and whatnot and and do a review of i've had a company send me a lot of great stuff it's a wonderful hobby again and uh you know i encourage everybody to give it a shot and you can start with as little as uh you know, a cell phone or a GoPro even. All right guys, that's gonna be it. I know it's a little bit of long-winded video and it's not uh, outdoor content, but this is how that outdoor content comes to you and how I do things. You know, throw in the comments what you guys like to use or what you use on your YouTube channels or what you would use if you had a YouTube channel. Yeah, let's uh, share some ideas. All the links are down below for most of the stuff. If if it isn't the exact item, it's an upgraded item. Feel free to use the links. Uh, if you have any questions about the equipment I use, how I use it, drop them in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. I hope you come back uh, for the next one. And I look forward to seeing you. Have a great day, guys. Take care.